Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Asus PN51 Ryzen 5000 powered mini PC. Now they do offer a few different models of this. They have the 5300U, 5500U, and the 5700U. The only one that I could get my hands on right now is the mid-range model with the 5500U. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at in this video. So as you can see, it's a tiny PC. I've actually taken a look at the PN50, not the PN51, with the 4000 series Ryzen APU. And performance out of that little mini PC was actually pretty good. But with this one here, rocking the 5000 series, 6 cores, 12 threads, hopefully we get a bit more out of it. So along with the mini PC, you're also going to receive a user manual, your power cable, we have some M.2 hardware, we also have some VESA mount hardware along with a VESA mount, and this does include a 65 watt power supply. The unit that I have here is bare bones, which means it doesn't have any RAM or storage, so I do have to add that. But this does support a couple different storage types. It will fit a 2.5 inch SSD or an M.2 SSD, and it even supports NVMe M.2 SSDs. Now to get this apart, there's four screws on the bottom. It's actually really easy to assemble. And if you're going with a 2.5 inch drive, it just mounts to the bottom plate. That way, once you slide it in, it makes contact with that power and data adapter located right here. Now you can go with an NVMe SSD for your boot drive and add extra storage this way. But for this setup here, I'm using a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD and 16 gigabytes of DDR4 SODIMM RAM running at 3200 megahertz. It will support up to 64 gigabytes, but the fastest we can go here is 3200 megahertz, and I would highly suggest going with the fastest you can. Because after all, this is a Ryzen APU, and the built-in GPU utilizes system memory for VRAM, and the faster it is, the better performance we can get. When it comes to I.O., up front here we have a 3.5mm audio jack, micro SD card slot, USB Type-C, which does support display out. There's no Thunderbolt on this because it's an AMD system. Plus, we have a single USB 3.1 Gen 2 port up front. We're on back here, we have full-size HDMI, a full-size display port, another USB Type-C, Gigabit Ethernet, and two more USB 3.1 ports. We can get a total of four displays out of this, utilizing the display port, HDMI, and both USB Type-C ports. So here's a quick rundown on the specs. This is known as the ASUS PN51. We have the Ryzen 5500U. Unfortunately, the 5500U is only a Zen 2 CPU, but we should still see some pretty decent performance for its form factor. Six cores, 12 threads, base clock of 2.1 gigahertz with a boost up to 4.0. Built-in Radeon Vega 7 graphics at 1800 megahertz. And with my specific setup, I have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD, but this does come from the factory with Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0 built in. For my operating system, I went with Windows 10 Pro, but you could always run Linux on this if you'd like. Before we jump right into Windows, I just wanted to give you a quick look at the BIOS, and one of the main reasons I always go in here with these little APUs is to up the TDP, but unfortunately, ASUS has not added any way to adjust the TDP, at least from the BIOS, but we can do it from a third-party application. I'll show you all about it in a second. This will dramatically increase performance and heat. So from the fan control, I'm going to go to performance. It will be a bit louder, but it's going to keep it nice and cool because we are going to take this up from 15 watts to 30. I was really hoping we could do it from within the BIOS, but it's really limited here. I mean, we have some NVMe control, some security control, and that's about it. There's just no way to do much of anything inside of here. So I have to do all of that from Windows, but I did want to give you a quick look at this. Okay, so here we are. I've installed Windows 10 Pro to that NVMe SSD. I've got a lot of applications that I want to test out. We're going to run some benchmarks, test out some video playback, and some gaming. As you can see, we have that Ryzen 5 5500U, 6 cores, 12 threads, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz, and the built-in Radeon graphics. Now, like I showed you, there's not much to change in the BIOS, and out of the box, this is running at 15 watts. I definitely want a little better performance out of it, and I'll, I'll show you exactly what this does in gaming and benchmarks in a second. But since we can't change it inside of the BIOS, we do have to use a third-party application. There's a few to choose from, but I personally like using AMD APU Tuning Utility. I'll leave a link for this in the description. Really easy to use. You can actually just go ahead and use their pre-made preset. So if we go to the 5000U series... 5500U. This will bring us up to 25 watts, and it's definitely a jump over the stock 15, but I like going up to 30 with these little APUs. Now keep in mind, when upping the TDP on a small PC like this, you will need to up that fan curve, and we can do that from within the BIOS. It's going to be a bit louder, but it's going to keep it nice and cool. In order to set up a custom preset, just go to Custom Presets, and from here, I've set it to 30 watts, 
on the TDP. For our slow boost TDP, I'm up to 35. Long duration, 3600. And the slow boost duration, 1024. Basically, the duration is high as it can go here, and we're at 30 watts. This definitely makes a big difference with the 5500U. Now, if you're not into gaming, you really won't need to up the TDP on this. If you want to use this as a basic desktop, you can set the fan mode to quiet, run this at 15 watts, and you'll be good to go. Light video editing, photo editing, web browsing, 4K video playback, all of that is going to work fine on the 5500U at 15 watts. But if you want to get a little more out of it, I would definitely up that TDP. And I'm going to show you the difference here. I've run a couple benchmarks at the stock TDP versus the 30 watts I've taken it up to. And I'll show you the difference between gaming performance also. So first up, we have Geekbench 5 at 15 watts, single core 1118, multi 3374. Now this isn't a dramatic jump with this benchmark here going up to 30 watts because it actually took that single core down a bit. Not sure exactly why, I did run it a few times and every time it was down just a bit, but we took that multi-core score up to 4019. Now this is all good and well, I mean we're getting better multi-core performance here, but as you can see this isn't a dramatic jump, but where upping the TDP on these small APUs really helps out is when it comes to gaming. So here's 3D Mark Night Raid running at 15 watts. Our total score was 7950. And if you take a look at that monitoring chart, you can see that the GPU clock and the CPU clock is all over the place, and that's because it's trying to keep that 15 watt TDP that it's set at. But once I went up to 30 watts with this unit, we got a score of 12,585, and if you take a look at that monitoring chart, you can see that we're at 4 gigahertz across the board, and our GPU clock is nice and steady also. This is the Witcher 3, 15 watts, 900p, low settings. I got an average of 27 FPS out of this, and if you take a look at Afterburner up in the top left-hand corner, it's all over the place. CPU and GPU clock is just going crazy right now because it's trying to keep at that 15 watt TDP. But once I took it up to 30 watts, this little APU can start to stretch its legs. Instead of getting a 27 FPS average with this game, I got a 39 FPS average. 900p, low settings, and it's working great here. It's working a lot better than it was at 15 watts. And remember, you will need more cooling when taking the TDP up. So from within the BIOS, I went to the performance setting, and this little thing can get pretty loud. But it does unlock a ton of performance in gaming. And since we're already here, I figured I'd test out a few more games. Here we have Overwatch, 1080p, medium. Keep in mind, we're running this at 30 watts. I got an average of 70 FPS, and it looks like it might have kind of stuck there. I'm not sure what was going on with Afterburner. It does drop down to around 68 every once in a while, but it doesn't go any higher. Might have just been a bug with the game, but I just didn't go back and test it because it's running fine like this. Next up, we have GTA 5 900p normal settings. I did try to go up to 1080, but that was just a little too much for this built-in Vega GPU. In the end, I got an average of 68 FPS, 900p normal settings on this tiny machine. Here's Fortnite, 1080p, in performance mode, I got an average of 85 FPS, and performance mode is definitely the way to go with these AMD APUs. When it comes to control, I did have to drop this down to 720p, we're at low settings, and I got an average of 41 FPS. This wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, but again, we're at 720p, but you gotta look at the form factor of this thing also. And finally, we have Doom Eternal 720p low. We got an average of 58. I was kind of hoping we could hit at least 62 on average with this one, but it does dip on down. If you take that resolution scale down just a bit, I'm sure it would, but I left it at 100%. So when it comes to the ASUS PN51, I think it's a decent performer given its form factor. We have those six cores, 12 threads, and the ability to go up on that TDP really helps out with gaming as you saw in this video. Web browsing and even 4K video playback at 15 watts is totally fine, and it's basically silent. When I'm at 15 watts just doing everyday normal tasks, I don't hear that fan kick on. But if you start the game like this, you will hear it kick up, and if you up that TDP, 
and turn the fan to performance, this thing can get pretty loud. But if you're sitting at those stock settings, this is a very quiet, cool, and low power consumption device. Whenever I test these little PCs, I always like to take a look at power consumption drawn from the wall. This is total system power consumption. Starting off with the stock settings at idle, 9.8 watts, 4K video playback, it jumps up to 11.6, and the maximum that I could get this to pull while that TDP set at 15 watts was 23.8 watts from the wall. Once I set this up at a 30 watt TDP, gaming, 34.5 watts on average, and the maximum that I could get this to pull was 42.8. So in the end, I'm impressed with the performance of the PN51. Keep in mind, they do make two other models, the 5700U and the 5300U. The one we tested in this was the 5500. It's the mid-range unit. And yeah, this could definitely be used as an everyday desktop, an office PC, and even for some light video gaming, as you saw in this video. I do plan on making a dedicated emulation video, so definitely keep an eye on the channel. I think we can get some pretty decent performance out of this when it's set up correctly. If you're interested in learning more about this mini PC, I will leave a couple links in the description. But that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.